Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using some mechanical drawing tools to create some geometric constructions. And because we're working with tools, we're going to want to tape down our paper. If you do not tape down your paper when you're working with drawing tools, you are not going to get the same results. You're going to actually get something that looks decent, but when you examine it closely, it's just a god-awful mess. So the way to get our drawing taped down correctly is to start with your T-square or your parallel bar. And this line here at the edge of the bar is the horizontal line. Of course, it's pressed all the way up against the edge of the desk so that it's not doing this. Because if it's not pressed up against the edge of the desk, if the head is not pressed up against the edge of your drawing board, well, then you're not going to get a straight horizontal. So make sure the head is right up against your drawing table, your drawing surface. And what you want to do is you want to twist and tweak and bend and adjust until the black line on the piece of paper matches the edge of the parallel bar. So right now I'm looking and I see that the edge of my T-square matches the black line horizontal on the paper. And when that's the case, you know that you're straight and you can tape down the corners. I'm going to put down two pieces of tape in the bottom corner. And I'll move to the top. And I'll put in two pieces of tape in the top corner. And then I'm a little suspicious. I just want to verify that horizontal is still horizontal. That the black horizontal lines on the paper match the edge of the T-square when the head of the T-square is pushed up against the drawing table. Okay, so the paper is secure. The paper is not going to move around on us, which is what we want to avoid happening. Second thing we need to do is we need to prepare our paper. And that's where your dry cleaning powder comes in. So you take your dry cleaning pad, and what you're going to do is you're going to give your paper a little shake, a little squeeze, and what you'll see is lots of little tiny pieces of eraser particle descend on the paper. So they look like little tiny crumbs of eraser. And their purpose, again, is to help you to prevent smudging while you're drawing. Let's talk about the tools we'll need to make our geometric constructions. You are going to need a triangle. Either one should do. You are going to need scale. You'll need your dusting brush. You're going to want to get your dividers, compass, and then erasing shield. And then as far as pencils go, you want one pencil to do some light work and you want one pencil to do some dark work. Some of our lines need to be very dark, and some of them will be very light. So, a lot of options. If you have a wood pencil that's got 4H lead, that produces a very light line. Okay, even when you press down hard, you get a light gray line, because the lead is hard. So, this might be one of the things I use for my light lines. Uh, another option. I recommend getting a non-photo blue pencil. If you want to use a non-photo blue pencil, well, that will make a light blue line while you're working. Just make sure the tip is nice and sharp. Now, I've got a lead holder here that's got some of that non-photo blue lead. That's a second option for my very light lines. If you don't have either of these things, you can use your 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencil but again, keep in mind you're trying to make light lines. And then later on, we go in and darken the parts we want to keep. So these are our light lines. How about the dark lines? So there are wood pencils that are special black pencils. They're extra dark and dense. And those will work fine. If you don't have one of those, you can use your 0.7 millimeter mechanical pencil. You're just looking for something with some dark, soft lead that can make a nice dark line. And of course, we want to make sure 
that things are sharp. But maybe not too sharp because we want to have dark, heavy lines, and a sharp point gives you a very skinny line. Okay. HB lead is also a very good lead, or just a regular yellow number two pencil has lead that's soft enough to make a nice dark line when you're all done drawing. Now, for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pencil for my light lines. And I'm going to use an ink pen for my dark lines so that you can see when we're all done what should be light and what should be dark. I don't recommend for you to use ink pens on this assignment. Our first task is bisecting a line. Bisect means cut in half. And uh, we have a line, segment A to B. And what we want to do is we want to find the midpoint and break that line into two equal parts. Now, of course, you might say, well, I could just measure it and then cut that number in half. And uh, you know what? That's true, you could. But we wanted to solve the problem graphically. Uh, remember, in geometric construction, the whole idea behind it was the people that invented it wanted to build very precise things, but they didn't have the decimal or a way to take a whole number and break it into smaller parts. So we're going to lay it out graphically and get the same solution. And when you do it graphically, there's no chance of making a math error off of a measurement. So here's how we go about it. We're going to take our compass, and we have the point end and the lead end. And we're going to stick the point end in at A, and then make an arc. Now, it's kind of important how big the compass has been opened up to. You don't want it too small. We want it to go at least halfway, maybe closer to what we estimate three quarters of the way is. See how I'm estimating, that's about three quarters of the way down the line. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing an arc. And then without changing the setting, without adjusting the wheel or changing anything, I'm going to take the point and put it down at the end of the line where the end point is, point B. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to swing an arc from point B. And now notice I'm trying to keep my stuff inside the box. My two light lines here are within that first big box because we want to be precise, but we also want to be careful. Okay, so if you're wondering, well, how does that show where the midpoint on the line is? Well, it doesn't, right? So how are we going to find the midpoint on the line? I'd like you to take your triangle, either one, and here's what you're going to do. You're going to line up the edge of your triangle with the point here where the two arcs intersect and the point here where the two arcs intersect. And when you do that, when you've lined up those two points, through that little football shape, or a little fish shape, whatever you want to call it. Maybe a couple of lips. Uh, I don't know if there's a technical term for it. It looks like a biscuit, if you do woodworking, like a spline. But when we're lined up here, and we're lined up here, all we have to do is take our heavy dark pencil and draw a line through those two intersection points. And then what we've created is a bisection. How can we tell if it's accurate? Well, you could take your dividers and you could go from the midpoint to the end where A is, and you can go from the midpoint to the end where B is, and you'll see they're exactly the same distance. So that was cutting a line into two equal pieces using the compass, laying it out graphically. Make sure you have light lines where you should have light lines, and then a dark line where you should have a dark line. Notice too, you didn't just cut it in half or find the midpoint on that line. You also created a special condition between this line and this line. So if we look at this corner here right now, what do you call this kind of corner? See, isn't that a 90 degree corner? So you made this line perpendicular to line AB by doing this graphic layout for bisecting a line. 